Hi guys. Welcome to Court Sages. In this video, we've compiled a list of the best reggae artists of all time. Reggae is a Jamaican musical genre that began in the late 1960s. The term also refers to contemporary popular music from Jamaica and its diaspora. Reggae music has roots in jazz and rhythm and blues music, and it has had a huge influence on the evolution of many modern genres such as dub, hip-hop, and drum and bass. Here are some of the best 20 reggae artists of all time, each of whom helped define and popularize the genre around the world. Number 20 is Luciano. Some may not consider Luciano to be one of the greatest reggae artists of all time, but many fans credit him for reviving roots reggae at a time when digital dance hall had taken over. When he released Where There Is Life, first-time reggae fans thought he was the artist capable of filling Bob Marley's somewhat oversized shoes. Instead, Luciano's music can only be described as poetic, uplifting, and thought-provoking. After splitting from Exterminator, Luciano released two live albums as well as two compilation albums with Sizzler and Anthony B. by 2001. At the 2002 Grammy Awards, the latter was nominated for Best Reggae Album. Number 19 is Freddie McGregor. Freddie McGregor began his musical career at the age of seven, earning him the nickname Little Freddie. McGregor has spent decades navigating the musical high seas, releasing classics, thrilling fans, and receiving numerous awards for his contribution to reggae. During the 1980s, he had a string of hit songs, including Big Ship, All in the Same Boat, Push Comes to Shove, and Just Don't Want to Be Lonely. Freddie Music was always aware of what was going on in the world, and he never wrote songs that discriminated against anyone. Number 18 is Buju Banton. Buju Banton is a living legend and the epitome of reggae music. Banton is without a doubt the greatest reggae artist to ever command a microphone. Mark Anthony Myrie is a living legend, a world-class DJ, breaker of records set by the Honorable Robert Nesta Marley, revolutionary, an ambassador of the Jamaican sound known as Dance Hall. He's made a career out of teaching music lovers how to love and be loved. He was born in the Kingston slum of Salt Lane. The mission of reggae music is to uplift, educate, and eradicate negativity from the minds of people all over the world, says Banton. Before the dawn, his 2010 album, won a Grammy Award for Best Reggae Album. Number 17 is Yellow Man. Because of his albinism, Winston Foster, also known as King Yellow or Yellow Man, was initially shunned by the industry. However, this did not prevent him from demonstrating his talent and establishing a long-lasting musical career. Mr. Yellow Man, his first album, was released in 1982. Nobody Move, Nobody Get Hurt, and The Mamad Over Me are among his hits. Number 16 is Shaggy. Shaggy, who was born Orville Richard Burrell in 1968, is best known for becoming the most successful crossover artist in dancehall reggae in the 90s. Shaggy, a quick and talented writer, developed a style rooted in Jamaican dance traditions. However, he displayed a pop sensibility and sense of humor that ended him to ordinary music fans in the United States and beyond. During this time, he became one of the most internationally recognized artists, with hits like Boombastic, Angel, and It Wasn't Me propelling him to success. While Shaggy's style differs from that of traditional reggae artists, this distinction has helped him become one of the most popular reggae artists in the United States. Number 15 is Ziggy Marley. As Bob Marley's eldest son, it's no surprise that Ziggy Marley has thrived in the reggae scene. Following Bob Marley's death, Ziggy began performing alongside the Wailers at various shows throughout Jamaica, and the group went on tour in 1984 in support of the year's Bob Marley Legend compilation album release. He and his siblings formed the Melody Makers shortly after his father died. Their album Conscious Party helped them break into the mainstream in 1998. Marley has now received five Grammy Awards for Best Reggae Album and two for Best Reggae Recording. The category is no longer given out. He also received a Grammy in 2009 for his album Family Time, which won in the Best Musical Album for Children category. As a member of the Melody Makers, he has also won. Number 14 is Beris Hammond. Beris Hammond is a Jamaican reggae singer. 
His soulful voice has propelled him to the forefront of the lover's rock movement. Over the years, he has given us timeless hits like A Little More Time with Buju Banton, What One Dance Can Do, Tempted to Touch, Putting Up a Resistance, and, most recently, God Is Love, with Pop Khan. During his three-decade career, the legendary singer has had eight Billboard Reggae Chart Top 10 hits, including, In Control, Love From a Distance, A Day in the Life, Music Is Life, and, The Ultimate Collection, Berries Hammond. Number 13 is Marsha Griffiths. Marsha Griffiths is the reggae empress and a longtime musical sensation. Marsha Griffiths started her professional singing career at the age of 15 with Byron Lee and the Dragon Iris Band in 1964. In 1978, she released her debut single, Feel Like Jumping, on Coxone Dodd Studio One label. While there, she released several duets as half of the duo, Bob and Marsha, including Young, Gifted, and Black in 1970 and The Pied Piper in 1971. As a member of i3s, she toured with Bob Marley and charted with Electric Boogie Song. She is also credited with the invention of the electric slide dance. Number 12 is Bunny Whaler. Bunny Whaler, also known as Jar B or Bunny Livingston, was the youngest of the three original Whalers. Bob Marley, 1945 to 1981, and Peter Tosh, 1944 to 1987, were the other two members of the band. When he went solo, he released his album Black Heart Man, which was well received by fans. Whaler released over 10 albums as a solo artist. He received three Grammy Awards for Best Reggae Album, Time Will Tell, Tribute to Bob Marley in 1991, Roots Classics in 1995, and Hall of Fame. A tribute to Bob Marley's 50th anniversary in 1997. He is still regarded as one of the most popular reggae legends of all time. Number 11 is Dennis Brown. Dennis Brown was born in Kingston and grew up on a street with a high concentration of recording studios. Brown began his recording career at the age of 11 and went on to release over 75 albums in his all too brief 42 years on earth. Despite the fact that the reggae legend died in 1999, his music and legacy lived on. Brown's prolific career allowed him to collaborate with major producers such as Joe Gibbs and Derek Harriott. His rise to fame was accelerated when Bob Marley declared him his personal favorite. Number 10 is Jimmy Cliff. Jimmy Cliff is the only living reggae artist to have received the Jamaican Order of Merit. He was born in Jamaica and goes by the stage name Jimmy Cliff. Jimmy Cliff, known as a consistent hitmaker, has released classic hits since the 1960s. Waterfall, Many Rivers to Cross, The Harder They Come, and Sitting Here in Limbo are among his world-famous songs. After appearing in the landmark film, The Harder They Come in 1972, he introduced reggae music to millions of people. Cliff has had a particularly strong following in South America and Africa throughout his career. In 2020, he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Number 9 is Gregory Isaacs. Gregory Isaacs is a well-known Jamaican vocalist who was equally at home in dance halls as he was in bedrooms. His career spanned over 30 years. From the heady days of reggae to lovers rock, a genre he practically invented, his talent spanned the centuries. Isaacs rose to prominence after appearing with the Concords, a band that disbanded after a few years. His steady rise to fame began in 1978, when he signed with Virgin Records' frontline label. Isaac's timeless classics include My Only Lover and Night Nurse. He credited his distinct style to R&B artists such as Percy Sledge, Sam Cooke, and Alton Ellis, among others. Number 8 is Steel Pulse. Steel Pulse was founded in 1975 in Birmingham. They are a roots reggae band whose songs frequently address issues of social injustice and racism. Despite their rising popularity in the UK, Steel Pulse was frequently barred from performing live in the country due to their controversial Rastafarian beliefs, but they still rose to international fame and became the first reggae band to appear on The Tonight Show in the United States. With their landmark album Babylon the Bandit in 1987, they also became the first non-Jamaican band to win a Grammy Award for a test reggae album. Number 7 is Sizzler. Miguel Collins is the well-known reggae dancehall artist Sizzler Kalonji. 
His illustrious career in the music industry is well served, as he continues to enjoy over two decades as a true reggae ambassador. Attempting to dissect his amazing and consistent body of work is a time-consuming task. To date, the DJ has released 90 studio albums, with 21 of them charting on the Billboard Top Reggae Albums Music Chart, with some of the most important being 1997's Praise Ye Jar and 2013's The Messiah, which earned Sizzler his first Grammy nomination. Thank You Mama and I'm Living are two of his most popular songs. No other contemporary artist has been able to recreate the popularity of reggae in the 1970s and 1980s like Sizzler. Number 6 is Desmond Decker. Desmond Decker is a Jamaican singer-songwriter and musician who specializes in ska, rocksteady, and reggae music. With Israelites, he had one of the first international reggae hits with his backing band The Aces, Wilson James and Easton Barrington Howard. With his songs about Jamaican people's daily struggles, Decker introduced the UK to Jamaican rude boy culture and paved the way for the likes of Bob Marley. Decker's most famous hits were recorded with Leslie Kong, who produced his music beginning in 1963. They collaborated on some of his seminal albums, including 007 Shantytown and Action, which paved the way for reggae music in the UK and around the world. You Can Get It If You Really Want, written by Jimmy Cliff and released by Decca in 1970, reached number 2 on the UK charts. Number 5 is Burning Spear. Burning Spear, whose given name is Winston Rodney, is no doubt one of the most enduring reggae artists of all time. He is still recording and giggling today, over 40 years on. Burning Spear's first landmark album was 1975's Marcus Garvey, which extolled the politics of the activist of the same name. The album includes both the title track as well as another underground hit, Slavery Days, two of Burning Spear's most popular hits of all time which still get regular airplay on the radio. Burning Spear spent decades touring extensively, and several live albums have been released including Burning Spear Live, Live in Paris, Live in South Africa, Live in Vermont, Peace and Love Live, and Live at Montrose Jazz Festival 1997. Touring the world time and time again, the band's live sound matured and grew more sophisticated while remaining firmly rooted in reggae. Number 4 is Peter Tosh. Peter Tosh was the most outspoken of the Whalers, along with Bob Marley and Bunny Whaler. Even on the group's early Island Records albums, he wrote the most provocative songs, including 400 Years and Get Up, Stand Up. He continued to take on the establishment after leaving the Whalers. As a proud Rastafarian with strong ties to Jamaica, Peter Tosh embodied reggae culture. Legalize It and Equal Rights, both released in 1976 and 1977, were two of Tosh's most important statements. The former was an outspoken supporter of the legalization of marijuana, also known as ganja in Jamaica. Tosh's final studio album, No Nuclear War, was released the same year he died. In 1988, it received the Grammy Award for Best Reggae Album. Number 3 is Toots and the Matals. Toots Hibbert, a prolific reggae hitmaker from Jamaica, rose to international prominence in the 1960s with his breakthrough album, Funky Kingston. His raspy tenor voice made him sound familiar to listeners all over the world. Toots, a two-time Grammy winner, is credited with coining the term reggae after using it on his 1968 single, do the reggae, with his band The Matals. Toots was serious about the message he wanted to send and the legacy he wanted to leave behind. A hundred years from now, my songs will be played, he said in a 2010 interview, because it is logical words that people can relate to. Toots and his group became one of the decade's biggest stars in Jamaican music thanks to hits like Bam Bam from 1966. Number 2 is Lucky Jew. Lucky Philip Jew was his real name. After losing a baby, his mother named him after being thankful for his birth. Lucky, like many other African children, was frequently forced to work to support his family rather than attend school. He used to work as a gardener or a library assistant. His grandmother raised him in part because his mother worked a lot as a single mother. He began making music when he was a child. He released several Bakanga albums in Zulu and Afrikaans before switching to reggae in 1984, inspired by Peter Tosh. He was South Africa's best-selling reggae artist. Prisoner was South Africa's best-selling album in the 1980s and 1990s, and Victims sold over a million copies. 
Serious Reggae Business compilation sold extremely well in Ghana. He has received over 20 awards both in South Africa and internationally. He spent the majority of his life on the road touring. He appeared in the films Getting Lucky, Lucky Strikes Back, and Voice in the Dark. Number 1 is Bob Marley. No list of reggae icons would be complete without Bob Marley at the top. Beginning in 1963, Bob Marley rose to prominence with his backing band, The Wailers. Bob Marley's creative life began in Jamaica and became the foundation of inspiration that spread messages of hope, justice, and understanding throughout the world. Marley's songs sounded peaceful, but they were frequently political, with popular themes such as love, redemption, and struggle. Bob Marley's classic singles include One Love, I Shot the Sheriff, Redemption Song, and No Woman, No Cry. The 1977 album, Exodus, by Bob Marley is perhaps his most famous. In Kingston, Jamaica, Bob Marley and the Wailers performed one of the most legendary reggae concerts in history, the One Love Peace Concert, in 1978. The concert took place during Jamaica's political civil war between the Jamaica Labour Party and the People's National Party. That's all for now guys, thank you for watching, and please subscribe to our channel to see more videos.